Hello, listeners, and welcome to Youth Ventures Podcast, PDX Business Spotlight. Hello, everyone. We are so excited to bring you back with another business spotlight. This week, we are spotlighting Third Eye Books, Accessories, and Gifts, and we have Michelle Lewis and Charles Hanna, who are the two co-owners of Third Eye Bag. And Michelle, let's start off and ask you the first question. So can you please give an overview of who you are, what your business is about, and how you got started? Okay, so um, thank you for having me. First of all, I appreciate you guys reaching out to us and highlighting our bookstore. It is an honor to be here today. So, uh, you know, an overview of our store, we are um, a small ended, independent black owned bookstore. We are proud to say that uh, we are at this point in time in this space called here and now the only black owned brick and mortar bookstore in the state of Oregon. Wow. Um, we were blessed to have some elders lay the foundation for us to be able to do this. The last black owned bookstore that was present in the state of Oregon was Reflections Bookstore. Um, they uh, subsequently uh, closed their doors in 2012. So from 2012 up to this point, there was no other brick and mortar black owned bookstore available. So the overview here is, is that we wanted to provide a space where black and brown folks can come in and find books that highlighted our culture and our history and be able to have access to them immediately uh, versus having to, you know, order things online mm -hmm. and wait for them to arrive. And so we do specialize in that. We are a bookstore. We have we have access to millions of books. We will get all types of books for anybody. However, our first priority is that we make sure that we have children's books as well as books that reflect the BIPOC community first and foremost. That's that's for that. And then how we got started is I am a lover of t-shirts. I love all types of t-shirts, in particular political t-shirts that uplift and empower black and brown folks. And I love earrings. And so what happened was I realized that there were certain earrings that I wanted to have, like an example could be the Black Power Fist that is so famously known mm -hmm. with the Black Panther Party. And I would want earrings like that, but I could never find them around here locally. But I would find them in other uh, parts of the country with other Black-owned businesses. And so what I would do is to practice cooperative economics, which is part of our value system, me and my husband, and what we taught our children is to spend money as much as possible within black and brown communities. So I would go and spend my money to get these type of earrings and type of t-shirts. And whenever I would come home back to Portland, people would always ask me where I got them. And so hence me and my husband said, whenever we have the opportunity, because we were both working full-time jobs, that one of our dreams was, was to open a bookstore Mm -hmm. and offer books <laughs> and offer t-shirts and these type of earrings. And so after supporting a, a small black owned books, uh, not bookstore boutique in Atlanta with four other black women who were trying to get their business started, I said, you know what, I'm going to reach out. I'm going to support these sisters. And one of the promises that they made, they said, if they ever, their store ever expanded, and, you know, uh, in, in the terms of what my sons would say, blew up, you know, um, <laughs> that they would reach back and help other black and brown women who were interested in starting boutiques. They would help them. And guess what? They followed through on their word. I was one of those sisters that they reached back and they helped and gave me what they called a rock star box. It had all types of t-shirts and lovely brown wooden earrings with black power fists shaped in Africa, all kinds of things and lovely t-shirts would had natural girls rock because at that time they wanted us to be happy with our hair and what mm -hmm. naturally grew out of our head. And I sold those shirts right along with those books and hence third eye books, accessories and gifts were born as a result of that. 
Wow, that is so empowering. And first of all, that's such a unique idea to like not only sell books to empower the BIPOC community, but also alongside with that, also sell like accessories. I really love the jewelry idea, the、uh, empowering fist. Like, I would love to buy an earring in the shape of that. That's so cool.、Mm -hmm. And all the accessories and even like clothing, that's super cool and such a unique idea. Michelle, who or what inspired you to start this business? So, you know, as I had shared earlier, too, that the, like, as the last bookstore that we had here was Reflections Bookstore.、Mm -hmm. And so, seeing the elders、um, start that bookstore, it was located in Northeast Portland, right on between MLK and Killingsworth, is actually where the, where the police station is at. That was a local meeting place for many elders and Black folks to. Come together. They serve, you know, they have like a little coffee and tea bar in there where you can get your books and have a little pastry and a little coffee. And you can see the elders playing dominoes. You can see young people coming there to have lunch, you know, from the height from Jefferson and various people in the community dropping in. So it was like a hub. And I really felt a sense of community there. But what was most Wonderful about that was being able to walk into that store and know for a fact that I was going to find something that was a reflection of me as an African woman. And I say as an, that because although my geopolitical location is here in the United States, I am an African woman because, you know, Africa is the cradle. A civilization. And so being able to walk into that store and see elders and people of all ages, of all colors come together and find books and share space with one another was very inspiring for me. And to see、mm -hmm. you know, a Black owned business operated by a Black man, a Black woman who worked together in unity was wonderful. And to see us come in and spend our money. With them and to love on each other was great. And so that, that's what inspired me and my husband. We wanted to create that space again. Here it is, we are creating that space again. That is so amazing, Michelle. I love how you. In a sense, kind of grew up in this community, and you recognize that. And even after the other bookstore closed their doors, you were able to recreate that community and become so successful. That is so amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Michelle, I was, I've interviewed a lot of businesses in the past, and I've noticed that being a person of color and being a BIPOC owned business may affect a business, but I've seen that it can affect. Someone's business in a positive or negative way. So, how has being a person of color affected your business? Well, you know,、um We are living, we do live here in Oregon, and all、mm -hmm. you know, in Oregon, you know, here it is radical acceptance.、Um, folks don't have to like it, but we're not as diverse as folks would have us to believe.、Mm -hmm. and, and you know, and, and you can just look at the history, you can research and read、mm -hmm. about the history of Oregon and how it was founded. And you know, for those of you who may not be aware of, it went 200 years ago. It, you know, may have been clo almost close to 100 years ago, maybe 80, but it was,、um, it was illegal to be black or、mm -hmm. brown, okay, and live in the state of Oregon. Okay, Oregon was, was, is a, a white utopia. So the culture of that history is still embedded here.、Mm -hmm. Now,、um, be, have, being born and raised here, I have experienced racism. I have experienced being otherized or not, uh, uh, folks not wanting. Me or people who look like me to be around, even more so now that gentrification has ravaged this community as well as other communities across the US. So,、mm -hmm. as far as the Black owned business, we, from time to time, for example, I'll give you most recently, we received a phone call from a, from a person who asked if we had the Andy Nogo book. Um, he had, you know, Andy Nogo is a leader of the Proud Boys. 
Um, and he wanted to know if we had the book, if we could get it. We don't have the book. We didn't have it physically in our store. He asked if we would be willing to get it and send it to him. I told him, you know, that's we could do that. And But my spirit, because I, I do a lot of ancestral work, my spirit was telling me that this call wasn't quite right. Um, Mm -hmm. And so it led to him asking me to look up a book that was written by a Russian author. Um, I looked up the book. The book was was not being printed in the United States. And I informed him of that. And so he his comment was, so if I were to go to Africa and ask an African prince to get me this book, he would have to get it. And I said, well, you know, if you feel like you know somebody in Africa, an African prince, first let first introduce him to me, <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. Because I want to know what books he can access so we can get them here. But if you know one, yes, I would suggest you go to him and get and ask him to get the book. So I knew then that he was being funny. But it led up to him telling me, he said, well, I have one more question for you. And um, he said, I want to know, there was a writer, Sean King. He said, is Sean King black? And I and I ended the call. So I'll give you that example, if that makes sense to you, mm-hmm. that somebody has to take time out their day to call a black-owned business to harass them like that in such a way, you know. So I knew that that was some type of, to me, some form of a racist type call to try to throw me off my game, but it didn't work. Um, the other thing was we had a man call to tell us that our, and he made sure he let us know that he was a white man and that he didn't agree with our sign, that the uh, the eye of what they refer to as Horus, but in Kemet, in Egypt, where we have spent time in, it's, it's the eye of Haru. And he said, it's, it's, it's the devil, and you people are the devil. And so as a person of color coming into this business, I expected that every blue moon we may get somebody like that their energy their uh, what the elders call is their neck down dead and i don't have i don't have to give them that energy because i i know who i am okay mm-hmm. and i'm very confident in who i am as an african woman and what my ancestors have contributed to the society and to the world so he just made the wrong phone call mm-hmm. <laughs> he thought he mm-hmm. was going to shake us up but you know we keep it moving because we're got gui- we're divinely guided and we are protected Wow. It's so amazing how despite facing so many like setbacks and all these people that are like trying to bring you down, you still face through that. And I love your confidence. You just, the way you dealt with this negativity. Um, it's just amazing, Michelle. I love that about you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we just, and you know, I have a strong belief, me and my husband, that we know we have good sense that we know all people are, aren't like this, mm-hmm. you know. But unfortunately, we know that I, I would be remiss if I didn't walk outside my door every day to know that there are people who go to bed in the morning, who go to bed at night and who wake up in the morning, who are consistently and ongoing trying to figure out how they can disrupt, dysregulate and harm black and brown people just for simply being. Mm -hmm. So I know that. And so because of that, I just have to know that, you know, a lot of this, this, I have to let that go and Mm -hmm. know that my armor The armor that I wear is the armor of my ancestors and the armor of my history. And when you know, Marcus Garvey said in a book, a person who does not know their history is like a tree without the roots. It's important that black and brown folks know, BIPOC folks know your history and know where you come from. Read about it, research it. Everything can't be found on Google and TikTok and other things. I know those things are important. Mm-hmm. But to to pick up a book and read, because so many of our ancestors have given their lives for that very, very right is to read and to write. And so we must, the Sankofa, there's a bird called the Sankofa duck with its head turned backwards. It, that's an Andinka tribal symbol that just means never forget. It is our job to never forget the lives and what our ancestors have given up so that we have these these freedoms called reading 
Okay. <laughs> I, I don't take it very like I don't take it lightly at all. So when we read about who we are, it cultivates us, it grooms us, it grows us, mind, body, and spirit. It, so when you run across ignorance, you don't have to respond mm-hmm. in a negative way. You can because people know who you are, they see your light. And when they see your light, they'll do whatever they need to do to try to snuff it out. But if you know who you are, then they can't do that. Wow. I really love the way you put that into words. It's just really empowering and inspiring. And thank you for that. Michelle, I know because of the pandemic, there's been so many businesses shutting down, but the pandemic has honestly also provided so many unique opportunities for businesses as well. So Michelle, how has the pandemic affected your business? Has it had upsides or downsides? You know, the pandemic, prior to the pandemic, of course, um, we shared space with some other grassroots organizations and other smaller black owned businesses. We look, I want to say incubator businesses, and we didn't get a lot of traction. Let's say there there were some people who would come and buy the books online was barely, you know, uh, getting any type of action in terms of people purchasing books every day. We might get two or three sales and and we would be, don't get me wrong, we would be excited about those sales, yeah. me and my husband. And um, so we have many, many, many slow days. Mm-hmm. Okay. And as we, we both had to continue to work our full-time jobs. I'm a mental health therapist by trade. I'm a social worker. I graduated from Portland State University in 2013 from the MSW uh, uh, program. And I'm proud of that. Wow. But we worked our jobs and every day we get a few sales. We'd be happy about that. And we just kept pushing. And so when the pandemic, when we left the country, but prior to the pandemic taking place, and what I share with my customers is that uh, when COVID hit, it wasn't at its peak. We had heard about COVID in New York, you know, that some cases had presented. I left the country to go to Kemet, what we are were taught to call Egypt. And I went there because I was blessed to have the opportunity to complete rites of passage with 60 other uh, women of all of, of all cultures of, from across the world. We all convened in Kemet. So we were off the grid for about three and a half weeks. We were off the grid. When mm-hmm. I came back home, I noticed everybody was wearing masks. And I remember walking through the airport telling my husband, why do these people have on masks? And we got in an Uber to go home. And I was telling my, we were driving, of course, down I-205. And we saw no cars. And I thought it was very eerie. And I remember telling my, I said, well, this is weird. Where is everybody at? And the Uber driver happened to ask us where we were coming from. And, of course, we told him we were coming from Egypt. And he said, well, don't they have COVID there? And I said, uh, well, I I don't think so because in in Egypt everybody was still visiting the pyramids and and you know and doing all kinds of things and so he said we're on lockdown we can't leave we can't go anywhere and I remember saying what do you mean we can't leave we can't he said we have to be in our homes only essential workers can be out and so when I he said you need to watch the news when you go home and when I got home we watched CNN and I was that I was floored that. I said, oh, we've done it now. We, we've, we've done, Mother Earth is really upset with us. We all forced to be at home and deal with ourselves and deal with our stuff. And um, so that was very unsettling. So that's how we were introduced to the pandemic, okay? Yeah. So I'll set the stage for that. And then when we seen Brother George Floyd, uh, yet another brother murdered, and everybody was forced to witness that online, you know, on TV, mm-hmm. that's when it changed for our business. I just remember hearing deans in the background. Oh, and I said, what is that sound going off? And my husband was like, that's the website. And we went and we were sold out of all kinds of books. And I just was like, I went through a phase with that where I felt guilty because we I felt like we were profiting from a person's death. And I, I that was I remember being very sad and tearful 
about it. And and then I, you know, went to the ancestors and asked for guidance. And mm-hmm. I'm so grateful. He's an ancestor and we will forever speak his name because that is the highest honor that we can give brother George, as well as so many others that uh, left this earth before us. And so he, that is what got our business going. And um, so to me, if it was a down and a up, you mm-hmm. know, side to that. Um, the other thing is, is that so many people wanted information about the BIPOC community. Mm-hmm. Finally, it's like this information has always been here, but it was sad that it took yet another death of someone who's a reflection of me. Mm-hmm. Someone who called out for his mother in his final hour, being a mother of three black men, they're no boys, they're men now, um, really shook me to my core. And it's sad that it took that to get people to say, this is not acceptable. And we have to do better as a human race. We have to do better as a people. So that's, you know, that's what I share with you. The upsides is that people are coming in, they're getting the books, they're taking responsibility of informing themselves and gaining knowledge. Uh, And white folks are having to figure out that it is not black and brown people's responsibility to deal with this. We didn't create racism. It's not our job to fix it. It's y'all's job. Get to work, come get a book, get together, create a book club, do what you gotta do. But it ain't, it's not our job. We have other stuff that we have to deal with with each other to heal ourselves. Mm -hmm. Wow, Michelle. um, Honestly, it's quite scary the way you found out about the pandemic. For me, it was like a gradual thing. I knew there was a pandemic going on and then the lockdown happened because of like the amount of cases that happened in Oregon. But I knew like mentally like what was going on around me. But I can't imagine what it would be like to just like come to the airport and like to see everyone in masks and like there's like no cars around you that sounds so scary and it's really amazing how you dealt with that too and like even despite the pandemic occurring you pushing through that and even like getting back those sales and honestly just pushing through the negativity and the downsides of the pandemic to get to the upsides Thank you. Thank you. I take that to my heart. Yes, it's hard work. I know this is something I believe that Mm -hmm. is needed right now. Um, I'm glad that we are here to be able to provide information, but I get so much joy when people come into the store, Mm -hmm. when people are smiling and excited about being in a bookstore, being able to finally touch a book. But when I see you know, black and brown sisters and brothers and children come in and they're like excited to turn around and see pictures and books and things that look like them. And so to me, that's like, okay, you know, this is, we, 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 all, we doing the right thing, you know? And um, mm-hmm. so that's a blessing. Wow. And Michelle, what advice do you have for young entrepreneurs, especially young entrepreneurs of color? And what are some experiences you could talk about that might motivate or inspire them? Okay. Um, well, my first thing is, is that don't be afraid to follow through with your dreams. Watch my one advice is watch who you share your dreams with, because I don't know how y'all refer to it now. We still call them haters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got to watch who you share your dreams with because there are people who don't want to see you win. Mm-hmm. And that's unfortunate. Radical acceptance. Nobody's asking you to like it. But there are people out here who may not want to see you win. So you got to make sure that whoever you share your dreams with, that all along the path that you've had this relationship with or friendship with, that you see how they move and how they how they talk about with other people when other people want to do certain things that are important or, or want to, uh, you know, accomplish certain goals. A lot of times when you're around people and, and you see how they might tear somebody else down when they hear that so-and-so is trying to do something, oh, he, he ain't going to do this or she ain't going to be able to do that or they ain't going to be able to do this. 
you got to pay attention to that because the very same thing that they saying about that person to you, more than likely when you share your dream, your goal that you want to accomplish, they probably going to they probably going to hate on you. So mm-hmm. just be, be mindful of that. Um, it's hard work. We mm-hmm. live in an age now where, you know, entitlement. And so you got to be clear about areas where you may feel entitled to other people's time, other people's money, um, and realize that anything that you want to have, you got to work for it. Nothing happens overnight. And you got to plan. And you got to know about a business plan, learn about a business plan, how to put one together, know about saving money and credit. Because starting a business requires those things. And some of us who may have grown up in homes where you watch your mom, your pops, or whoever that elder was or family member that was that may have raised you work really, really hard and money might have been funny. You know, people may, you know, um, you may have been poor in terms of cash, but you was rich in love with your family, but you watched your family and, and friends work really, really hard um, because that's all they did. They didn't have no money. And they may not have talked about credit a lot. And so most black and brown folks who grew up, what they say, surviving in that surviving mode instead of thriving, because there's a big difference. We got to know that we can do more than survive. We're entitled to live the best and highest life that we could, that, you know, we're entitled to that. But here it is. We have to put in that work. So knowing your credit, understanding a business plan, a business model that you can write down and put in the words because banks want to know that they, 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 you know, passion is wonderful, but they ain't going to give you no money because you're passionate. OK, so learning about those things, keeping your credit together is number one. And two, in a business, what I've had to learn is that it, me and my husband started our business physically with having a location in 2019. But we went in understanding that it was going to take about three to four years before we seen any profit mm-hmm. to put in our pockets. Literally. Hence, we had to work a job. Be expect to work work your job. My mother used to tell me, you don't never quit a job if you don't have something else to go to. So be expect to work your job and pursue your dream at the same time. It's going to pay off. Um, we are still, you know, do we, are we millionaires? No, that's another thing. When people think you get a business going, all of a sudden they see maybe customers coming in and giving you money that you have a whole bunch of money in the bank. No, it don't work like that. You sometimes have to tell your family and friends that as well. It doesn't work like that. Um, be prepared to keep investing in your business. Every, we're still investing in this business. Mm -hmm. We're still, when we get money in, me and my husband set time aside each week to go through what money we're bringing in, pay our, pay our bills to the store, but also what do we need to do to continue investing and growing our business? And of course we pay ourselves a little something, but we, there have been still some times where we haven't been able to pay ourselves something so we had to you know when we left our jobs we had to you know save up you know a few you know about a year's worth of our salary so that Mm -hmm. when we couldn't pay ourselves from the business we had a way to pay our bills and you know eat and do some nice you know do (laughs) some things you know uh to live so i'm sharing that with y'all to go in and be realistic it's just gonna take time anything that Mm -hmm. is worth having in your life and if that is, it, just know that it's going to take time to cultivate. Don't let nobody come and steal your joy. And don't let nobody tell you that you can't do it. You can do anything you want. Remind yourself that every day. You are your ancestors' wildest dreams. So the, what I encourage you to do is, you know, reach for the stars. Okay? Mm-hmm. Be prepared to work hard. Understand that there's going to be some pitfalls. You're going to experience some times where things don't work out the way that you think they should work out. 
And that's okay. Instead of allowing yourself to get stuck in what didn't work, ask yourself what you can learn from that experience that's going to propel you forward. So that's what I want to share with you in terms of hopefully what I have will inspire you and will motivate you to go out and do whatever you need to do to get your business going. My son has a t-shirt business that he recently started. Um, He is 22 years old. He loves, um, uh, uh, I I don't want to, I guess maybe I call them tennis shoes, but I know that they Mm -hmm. like high end, like the Jordans. I'm I'm, I'm assuming those are high end type shoes, those retro type shoes. And he studied, he's spent time researching on how to get a business going around that. He's done it and he just launched his uh, t-shirt straight to feet. And I, I love that about him. And one of the things he shared with me is about how me and his dad has inspired him and how he's watched us work hard and how he knows it's not going to be easy, but he's willing to put in the work. And so you got to be willing to put in the work. That's what I share with you. Wow. Uh, Michelle, thank you so much for that advice. To any of the young entrepreneurs out there listening, I hope that motivates you to go out and start your own business and work hard to do the best you can. And Mm -hmm. Michelle, how can people support your business? Well, first of all, um, follow us on Instagram. We are Third Eye Bag. So if you're not a follower of us, follow us there. We also can be uh, found on Facebook at Third Eye Books. So, you know, follow us, give us Mm -hmm. shouts out. We love, encourage us. We need our community to support us. Also come in, buy some books, tell other people about the store, bring in your friends and family. Let let folks know that we are here. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that is that would be a big help to us. And we love to see you come in. So uh uh we plan to do some events at the store, um, have some author readings and things of that nature, some book clubs. So uh, we will want young people to come in and participate in those. We're looking for young artists. So, you know, if you're an artist and you want to have a place where you can showcase some of your art, reach out to us because we want to use the store to create a space for young people to come in um, and showcase their art. We have a few Uh, young people who make, you know, um, greeting cards, who are self-taught artists, beautiful. We want y'all to come in and use the space. We'll set some space up for y'all, invite your friends and family to come in and and buy your cards. And then we want to have some of those things in our store as well. So, you know, that's what we want. That's what supports us. Us, Y'all supporting us means we can support you guys because y'all are the future. Wow, that sounds so amazing. And mm-hmm. Michelle, what are some books that you would recommend to our listeners to read? Wow, where do I start? So <laughs> many books, so little time. Um, <laughs> one book that I recommend for a lot of young people is uh, the autobiography of Malcolm X. Mm-hmm. If you ever have an opportunity, come in and get the book or get an audio book. We are on Liberal um, FM. For audiobooks, for those of you who like audiobooks, you just look up Third Eye Bag, you'll find us there. I highly recommend the um, autobiography of Malcolm X. Um, for the book Blackout right now is really wonderful. Mm-hmm. That's the newest book written um, by several authors around, about young love and and um, so that's one of the ones that I want to uh, encourage right now as well. Wow. Thank you so much for those recommendations. I will also definitely check out those books. That sounds amazing. And Mm -hmm. Michelle, are there any special projects or anything else that you would like to plug? Um, Well, right now, like I say, we just got the store opened on June 19th, um, Mm -hmm. excuse me, June 20th. My son got married on June 19th. Congratulations. Uh, And thank you. Thank you. (laughs) So uh, we're, like I said, we're working on right now is just really trying to identify some authors that can come in and do some book signings. So uh, right now we have uh, a young sister who uh, wrote a book called No God Like the Mother. 
Um, and so uh, she's done some author readings uh, and signing book signings with us. So we plan to have some local uh, authors come into the store to do some book signings and for uh, customers and folks to meet them. So that's what we're working on right now. I just encourage everyone, like I said before, to follow us on Instagram because we definitely try to post and let people know any type of events that uh, we will be conducting at the store. So that will be a way to keep you in the loop. Wow, that sounds so amazing, Michelle. Um, Listeners, definitely go check out Third Eye Books, Accessories, and Gifts. Um, We will be linking all of their social medias, their Facebook and Instagram, in the description box of wherever you're listening. So definitely go click on that link and follow them and comment and like on their posts. And we are also going to be linking their website. So definitely... If you're an audio book listener or if you personally like reading books, definitely go check them out in like all types of media possible through their website. And uh, we will also be linking their address of where they're located. So if you want to personally go and meet them and buy a book from them, you can do that as well. So Michelle, did you have any last words that you wanted to say? Yes, one thing I wonder if you, while you're looking on the website, if there is a book that you cannot find on the website, on our webpage, we have a book, what we call a, a special book order request form. All you have to do is fill that out. Let me know the title of the book, how many copies you want, um, and the author, and you can send that hit the submit button and it comes directly to me and I will get on top of ordering that book for you to either be shipped to you or picked up at the store. So just because you don't find it on the website doesn't mean that we won't get it or we don't have access to it. Um, But we have access to millions of books. Just let us know what you're looking for. Wow. That sounds amazing. That's also a really great option for all the listeners out there. Thank you so much, Michelle. It was an honor to interview you today and share your story. And that's it from PDX Business Spotlight. Please join us in the next episode. Thank you for listening to PDX Business Spotlight by Youth Venture, and we hope to see you in the next episode.